Hello and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, National Sales Manager for Bone Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. How we doing, Rob? Oh, I'm doing really good. What the hell is that on your lip? Well, Wayne, it's a little bit of cancer. Really? Yeah. Ah, damn it. That's right, the big C. Really? Yeah, hopefully Pauline doesn't hear this. Um, yep. Hey, another public service announcement yeah. here. When you see something like this in your body, don't wait two and a half years. Maybe go get it checked. I had to go to the doctors the other day, and so Pauline went, of course. Mm. She had to go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've never wanted to bring Pauline to the doctor like she was my mother. <laughs> uh, I okay. always like to bring Judy for that, but go ahead. Well, I'm a changed man. Mm -hmm. Because the first doctor we went to with her, they gave me, you know, that stack of paperwork. Yeah. And I just walked over and handed it to her. And she was... She filled it out? All over it. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what? For years. Years. I'm like, you're not going with yeah, me. Yeah. I'm a man. Mm -hmm. I don't need my mother going. My, right. my mother didn't even go yeah. when I was a kid, yeah. you know? But <laughs> the paperwork deal, I'm bringing her everywhere I <laughs> Absolutely. go. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't believe how dumb I've, I've been all these years. My wife, I'm like a 12-year-old kid. She goes in with me every time. They go, how long have you been feeling this? And she's going, well, he, I, he's been experiencing it for about six weeks now, and he's been blah, blah, blah. And I'm like a 12-year-old kid sitting there playing with my pen, pencil. She fills out all the paperwork. I don't know who our doctor is or what symptoms, you know, all this. She, she's got it all. It's brilliant. The, the only downside I wish to you it. Would, I told you don't I'll, touch I'm me. I'm sorry. I know I'll, we're I'll, close, I'll, but I apologize. the touching thing. That cancer doesn't rub off, does it? Uh, huh? That cancer doesn't rub off, it? could be it? anywhere. Sorry. Okay. okay. All right. You, you're acting like Cuomo. Yeah. yeah sorry. Easy on the touching. <laughs> all right. The only bad thing about bringing your wife in there. Move over a little bit. When the doctor starts asking really personal questions, you, you know, that, like, that well, give me one. <laughs> <laughs> give me one that he's asking you that's really, I, I, really I don't personal. even like to say this to you. <laughs> when's last time? <laughs> Come on. When's the last time you had a bowel movement? A bo yes. See? You don't want your wife in there for questions Actually, like uh, that. About 45 minutes ago. Really? Right before I don't, we... I, you, I don't right, care. Right before we can, you and I can talk about anything. <laughs> But you don't want to talk about that in front of your wife? No, we don't need to talk about stuff like that. You guys live in the same house, right? Yes. So I talked about what this. What does she think you're doing in there? It's always a mystery. Right. Yes. We have three bathrooms for a reason. Okay. We have the neutral bathroom in the middle of the house. Mm -hmm. And then she's got hers and I got mine. And, you know, that's, that's all we need to know. Do you have your own bathroom? Of course. You clean it? No. <laughs> You're a, you're a gem. There's now very your wife little has to clean up. Now your wife has to clean two bathrooms because you want separate bathrooms. Yeah, it's not that she has to. You know something? We, she doesn't actually. She's a saint. Everybody thinks Pauline's no, a saint. My, I think. I, I listen. Yeah, what was you're the You're making her clean two bathrooms. I don't make her clean two bathrooms. Uh, she doesn't clean the bathrooms. The, today's topic is my lip cancer. Okay. Well, it's not, but let's start with that. Let's go back to that. Yeah. Don't you know, let things go. Okay, another public service. The last public service announcement went really good. Yeah. The well, colonoscopy one. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. A lot of people went out, got checked. Yep. We probably saved some lives. Health matters. Eh? We might be saving some lives yeah. now. Yep. But the funny part was, um, you were just saying that. The doctor would ask me, or you were a smoker. Yeah, oh. Okay, so I'm sitting in the chair and we got two doctors, two nurses, and it was kind of a, he's a surgeon, and here's, we're going to do this and that, and, uh -huh. you know, we just got to ask you some questions. Okay. So I'm sitting in this big, nice chair, you know, mm -hmm. plastic surgery type thing, mm -hmm. and Pauline's sitting over there. The guy says, uh, you ever smoke? Mm -hmm. And Pauline, nope. <laughs> he's never smoked. <laughs> but it doesn't end there, uh -huh. okay? It's like, He's never smoked anything since high school. He's the only person that I've wow. ever met in my whole life who's never smoked anything. Wow. And then she says, well, wait a minute. My son-in-law, oh. Rebecca's husband, Kyle, oh, this he doesn't, the, the doctors and the nurses are cracking up, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. 
So then, uh, are you a drinker? You drink. You know, we used to drink. This See? is Pauline. Oh, I, that's funny. I, I was like, uh, and Pauline goes, we used to drink, but now, yeah, maybe once in a while we'll have something at a mm -hmm. wedding or something. But yeah. we're really, we're really not drinkers. Yeah. And then he said, and I didn't understand what he was saying. It was, uh, it was something about drugs, you know, recreation. Yeah. So I guess I didn't pick it up, yeah. you know, recreational yeah. drugs. Yeah. Once again, I, I opened my mouth, mm -hmm. and Pauline's like, amazing. That's he never took drugs in high school. He drank in high school. Yeah. But he never takes drugs. He's never yeah. taken drugs. His, wow. uh, you know. This is a great visit for you. Oh, my God. So when you were saying Judy does all yeah. the talking, yeah. it, it was awesome. Yeah. But That's the funny part was watching the doctors just Rick. cracking up. That's too good. Okay. So now they're going to how they're going to do it. They're going to do this surgery. I mean, it's not even a big deal. Yeah. You're under like uh, yes. local, you okay. know, like, like dentists, like Novocaine. Yeah. Yeah. And they go in and they pick a little bit out, test it, and they pick a little bit more. And then when they get down to where there is no cancer, mm -hmm. you're done. Yeah. And then that day I go to another guy and he, he fixes the, okay. the hole. Okay. So you're good? I'm good. I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, I'm good. Now, when he starts saying, we go in, we pick a little, mm -hmm. pick a little, test it, pick a little, test it, Pauline starts crying. Oh. She's no. bald. Oh, no kidding. All the nurses and everything, they're like, oh, you know. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's pretty yeah. sweet. I said, and then I looked at her, I yeah. go, you see? Mm -hmm. You see? This is why I don't want to bring any of these yeah. things. Yep. Yep. But... Well, you know, I genuinely, genuinely... It's nice to have somebody who feels that way about it does. me, I guess. Hey, yeah, I absolutely. genuinely pretend to care about you. <clears throat> I do. And I feel it. I actually had my own... Um, I, was in the, I was in the emergency room this weekend. Really? I was. Honestly, you didn't tell me. I didn't. I have a picture. I can show a picture of it later. I was fishing, and uh, I buried two, two hooks in my finger. See the... Uh, boom, boom. Whoa. Yeah. Treble? Treble hooks, buried them way past the barbs. And it was the first thing in the morning, it was like seven, it was like my, maybe my fifth cast in the morning. How'd you do that? I caught a fish, while I was taking the fish off, he started jumping and went ballistic. The hook came out, buried in me, now, now he's jumping all over, the, uh, all over the place with my hook, my finger and the other hook. So I buried him down to the barbs, you know, Ooh. the end of my day, yeah. Okay. So what'd they do at the hospital? Um, it's funny. Because, I told oh, you. I'm sorry. I'm a touchy kind of guy. We're not doing this like this anymore. All right. That's the third time you've touched What's, me. What, what, what are you weirded out about people touching you? Listen, just don't touch me. Okay. All, All right. right. All right. Do you see me touching you? No, you don't. Okay. All right. So It's um, nothing, nothing personal. No, I get it. I don't need to touch you. Yeah. So I, I was worried that the doctor would try to pull both of the treble hooks out at the same time. Which would have been, which would have been, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how he's going to do it. I mean, that's going to hurt like hell. So you probably told the doctor how to do this. What I did, I brought a set of dikes with me. The rusty set of dikes. And, I, and I, I'm sitting at the thing and the doctor goes, oh yeah, he goes, we get a few of these every year. I said, hey man, I, I, bought a set, I brought a set of dikes if you need them. And he starts laughing. He goes, you, are you trying to take my job? Yeah. He goes, no, I got this covered. I go, all right. You told him who you are. National no, sales no, manager. I didn't think I, National adhesive sales manager. In those cases, and I, I could probably do your job too, Doc. So in those cases, I wear a name tag. <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to talk today about about. Well, wait a minute, wait. Go ahead. Wait, wait, wait. So, finish the story. How'd they get him out? So he he goes, you want he goes, you want me to numb you up? I said, I don't think so. He goes, Yeah, I think you do. I said, All right, well, okay. So wait he numbed me up. Man, this was yeah. your time. Yeah. This was your roadhouse time. To what? Remember in Roadhouse when he got his stitches and she goes, you want it? He goes, no, nah, I don't need that. Pain don't hurt. Yeah, well. You should have done that. Yeah, well, you should have showed everybody. I actually said. You're you, a tough guy. Well, I said you don't need to, hoping he would say, no, we have to. And he did. So. He did say we have he to. Said, he said, he goes, no, nah, we should numb it up. I okay. said, all right, cool. So, yeah. I'll so, show you pictures. How'd they get it out? So he, took, he had his own set of, uh, of dikes, and he cut, he cut Unrusty, it. Unrusty, clean ones? Yeah, yeah, and he cut it right there, and then you, you, it was no big deal. You don't hardly feel it. It's not as bad as probably the cancer, but I don't know. It still hurt all the same. Right. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk today about nail glue assist. 
And we talked a little bit about nail glosses today, but um, there's a new twist, uh, and I've been hearing different things across the country, and so I just do want to talk about it a little bit. And um, when we talk about nail glue assist, I'm not talking about when you're do, doing a full trowel and you're also nailing, okay? When you're doing a full trowel and you're also nailing, the gluing is the primary method or installation method. So you don't need to stay on your nailing schedule in that case, all right? If you're doing a nail glue assist where the nails are the primary installation method and you're using a glue assist, for instance, with the sausages, then you, make, you do need to make sure you stay on your nailing schedule, okay? So I cannot talk about nail glue assist without talking about the Bona R540. I, I can't help myself, and, and uh, so I'm going to include talking about the 540, and I'll tell you the reason why. For the last 10 years, and you've probably seen it at the schools, guys will say, yeah, you know, I get it. We're going to wider and wider plank. We're getting more complaints about the popping and squeaking, and so we understand why we need to use, a, use the glue assist. That all makes sense. In fact, the NWFAs had a spike in complaints about noisy, popping, squeaking floors. We've gone to wider plank. The wider the plank, the less fasteners you're going to use per square foot, right? But the question always comes up, what? What about the moisture? Exactly. And that's, we've had a lot of guys to the school ask, what do we do? We okay. have to now make a choice. Yeah. Do I use the glue for the glue nail assist? Yep. Or do I not use the glue and yeah. use felt paper for my vapor retarder. Right. If you're doing a nail glue assist... You had to make a choice. Yes, exactly right. If you're doing a nail glue assist, you have to forego the moisture protection. Right. If you use the, the, the building paper, as you call the felt paper in your part of the world... Um, door skin that you call in your... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still, yeah. That door skin thing still yeah. kills me. So, um, now, and, and let's face it, um, with today's fast-paced construction, they're building these things faster and faster. We have tighter windows to get the job done. We have, we have you, know, we, we, you know, everybody's short on, on labor. We can't get laborers. So having a product that will give you the nails, nail glue assist, but also addresses the moisture concerns is huge, right? And since we have that short window of time, um, it leaves us two choices if the moisture in the, con in the subfloor is too high we can either roll the dice and hope the floor doesn't cup, or we delay the job, right? Or, like I said, you're taking, you're taking a chance that the, you're gonna get hit with a, with, a, with a cup floor down the road. So, the R540 has is, is been a great solution for this. On wood subfloors, when you're doing nail glue assist, it, it protects you up to 20% moisture protection. Or if you're not doing a nail glue assist, still protects you up to 20%, you have to wait about an hour and a half and you can start nailing the floor, okay? But let's talk about the nail glue assist. Um, obviously, our, our bona sausages has been is you know has been a huge deal for us, and we sell a tremendous amount of them across the country. Uh, from time to time, I'll hear guys say, "You know what? I can't. I couldn't get the sausages, or we run out of sausages." Um, so how do we address that? We still want to do the nail glue assist. We don't necessarily want a full trial. And guys are finding that across the country, they're able to uh, do a technique that my brothers have been using for quite some time. Um, they primarily do a, 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 the nail glue assist with the sausages. And you see guys out there, there's nothing new. I mean, my brothers do it, but a lot of guys are doing it across the country. Where you're taking the trowel, and on the short side of the trowel, um, they're, they're, they're every six to eight inches, they're, 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 they're spreading the adhesive across the floor in that manner. Um, some people will also make a mark on the subfloor where the butts are going to are line up where they're going to end and they'll, 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 uh, they'll hit, hit it with the, uh, the trowel there to make sure they're getting some on the butt joint as well. But it's quick, it's fast, it's effective, and, and um, doesn't cost a lot of money to do that. So you're saying that you would take the end of your trowel, trowel the adhesives on almost like you were mirroring, mirroring, mirroring? Mirroring. Mirroring. Yes. I don't think I've ever said that word before. Well, you, you handled it well. It came out weird to start. The first time. Yeah. Try it again. Mirror ring. There you go. Your mirror ring, your joist, and then one in between the joist. Mm -hmm. So that's what it would look like when you're drawing it down. Yeah. Using the short side of the trowel, yeah. the end, almost like every eight inches. Correct. Yep. Your Quick. joists are 16 on center, mm -hmm. one in the middle, that would give you every eight inches. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's quick, it's effective, and, and what have you. But I'm, I'm going to go back a, a minute because when I, when, I, when I talk about using the R540, and I, I, this, you know, of all of our products, man, I, I, this to me is, is a huge deal because I knew when I was a contractor, I would have given anything to have a product like this. My brother's using it on every job. So we got a labor shortage, right? You want to make more money at the end of the year. You can't do more jobs because you don't have the, I mean, we, you know, you don't have the guys, right? So how do you generate more income? You make more money per job. You make more money per job. Right. Right. So by using the 540 <clears throat> and upselling it to the customers, <clears throat> that's a dry cough, right? Not a COVID cough? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. Start over there. Okay. Sorry. I just uh, coughed right into the microphone. That's okay. Just as long as it's a, like a dry cough, not the COVID thing. No, it's not COVID. Yeah, cool. But I won't touch you. Well, I'm touching you You're on the You're probably forearm. touching me getting COVID. You got I had it. You that. got it because you were touching me. Well, you get weird about the touching. I never knew that about you. Uh, You've actually hugged me before. Why don't you admit it on camera? Never hugged you. You hugged me. You hugged me. Where? Uh, coming at the airport one day. I'll never forget it because I thought I looked around to see if people were looking. Was I drunk? You had a few. <laughs> so, okay, so, okay. So you don't have the labor. I do get touchy when I drink. Yeah, because you, you were touchy. You know, I'm not a good drinker. No. That's my problem. That's why I don't drink a lot, because. You get mean? No. You get s silly. I get an alter ego. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. How so? Tony Clifton. That's who, my who the hell's that? drinking alter ego. Tony Clifton. No kidding. Yeah. Yeah, he's, is Pauline he a, hates Tony Clifton. Is he a mob character or? No. Did you ever see Man on the Moon with Andy Kaufman? The can't Andy Kaufman story? Can't stand Andy Kaufman. Did you ever see the movie? No. Okay. Yeah. He had an alter ego named yeah. Tony Clifton. Oh. Very loud, very okay. obnoxious, lounge okay. singer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's you? That's me if I drink too much. Hmm. It's messy. It's, it's just not a good look for me. Okay. But he's a fun guy to be around. Really? Yeah, people have fun when Clifton's around. And he doesn't mind touching people at that point. He touches people. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Bad. Noted. Yeah. Okay. I should have told the doctor about Tony Clifton. You should have. Yeah. I drink. Yeah. The reason I don't drink is because Tony Clifton comes I'm trying out. to kill Tony Clifton. Yeah. <laughs> Pauline is. She hates. All right. She hates Clifton. So you don't, you, you know, you want to generate more money at the end of the year. We can't do no more jobs necessarily because we, of the manpower. Being able to upsell the R540 uh, protects their investment, but it also protects, it's almost like having the homeowner pay your insurance that for callbacks, right? For mm -hmm. cupping, cupping issues and moisture related issues. And by the way, on LVT, under LVT, it's fantastic. We're seeing more and more Mold complaints on the LVT, on the floating LVT, uh, mold complaints, uh, edge curling, those type of issues that are coming up now. Um, you know, it's relatively a new floor covering in, in America, if you think about it. Uh, and we're starting to see, like, there's, you know, that's the thing. Sorry. Gee. Sorry. Sorry. Are you doing it on uh, purpose uh, now? I, no, I just touched your shirt. It, no. That, that's not weird. That felt that. That was okay. an arm. That was upper arm. Okay. All just. Right. All right. Try to. Avoid the touching. It's like you're going to be the next governor okay. in New York. All right. Okay, so. Are you practicing? No, no. Okay. So LVT and LVP floors, we think about it. I mean, it's relatively new floor covering. And, uh, you know, there's, no, there's nothing in this industry is bulletproof, right? I mean, how many times we come out, this is the next thing, it's bulletproof. This is the next thing, this is the next thing. And, this and, is the greatest stuff and, ever, and everybody. It drives me crazy, all these home shows using this you, LVT and all, oh, how great it is. You're I've told this to you before. I've mentioned it on the show. I attended Domotex a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. two, I think it was two years ago, well, the last time they had it. And I went to a, um, an inspector's class. Okay. There was a guy who did inspections, hmm. commercial inspections only. Okay. That's what his company did. Okay. And it was supposed to be about wood and LVT and carpet and everything. It was supposed to cover all... Floor he talked about nothing but LVT and wow. the issues. Wow. And 80% of what he talked about was the mold issue yeah. with the LVT. Some of the pictures he showed look worse than my lip. 
No kidding. Yeah. Wow, that's hideous. Uh, exactly. Right. So, you know, we at one point were actually going to get in the LVT uh, adhesive game. But it just, if you look at all that pollution in those products, it, it, just, um, it just didn't feel good. Um, and we had to make a decision. And, what, and you know, that's the thing. Our, our heritage has been hardwood floors. Yeah. We, don't, we haven't done anything else. We don't dabble in anything else. Uh, it's all hardwood floors, uh, you know. So um, that's something we uh, made a decision not to get involved with. You know why they call I, it luxury vinyl plank? Right, no. because polyvinyl chlorinate flooring just yeah. doesn't resonate well yeah. with people. I think, uh, I think there's going to come a day when people realize that this is a this is a much bigger problem than we. Anyhow, we get on another topic. But underneath the LVT LVP floors, if you're worried about the edge curl, the moisture issues, and what have you, um, the R540 is great underneath that. But what it allows the guys to do is to protect the homeowner's investment, protect their own. Uh, uh, business interest of not having to go back. I mean, let's face it. It's not our, you know, the, the, the hardwood floor guys take on all this responsibility of everything that came before us. We're giving a building that isn't ready, that isn't acclimated like it's supposed to be. We're, 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 putting, we're putting, putting ourselves in positions that, that through no fault of ours, uh, uh, you know what I mean, that we, we take on all this liability. Why not have the, c the customer, you know, because we don't have optimum conditions, and because they they have an, you know they want to protect their investment, if there's a callback, no one else is going to be able to come back and say, no one's ever going to come back to you and say, well, gosh, Bob, we know it wasn't your fault because you didn't have good conditions. They're going to say you're the floor guy, it's cupped. It's on you. It's on you. So this way, it's a way to protect yourselves, stay on schedule, make more money on the jobs. To me, it's a fantastic business decision. So I didn't I didn't want to talk about the R540. But I can't talk about glue downs anymore, especially the sausage nail glue assist, without talking about without using R540. Let me ask you a question. You just said, I want to see if I got this right. We are using R540 under LVT or LVP. Correct. Yeah. Would that be two coats? If you were on plywood, would that be two coats because we don't want anything okay. to mitigate through because That's a good LVP doesn't breathe like a wood floor does? Correct. That's a good question. So on a wood subfloor, we never. If I had a bell. Yeah. I'd be yeah. dinging it right now because yes. you just gave me a. Yeah. Hey, that's a good question. Yeah. Well, I get, what do, I get one of those maybe yeah. one every ten yeah. shows. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're deserving of one Thank every ten shows. Thank you very shows. much. So uh, it is a great question for for um, plywood subfloors. Any wooden subfloors, um, you'd never want to use more than one coat of the R540 because we don't want to completely block all that moisture from coming through. Okay then you can promote dry rot, that's for sure. Um, if you're using uh, over concrete and you're using our adhesive with a proper trowel, you only need one coat, bringing you up to 18 pounds and 95 RH. If you're using, however, a floating floor where you're not using our adhesive, you're just floating a floor like LVT or whatever floor, or you're floating plywood or whatever, then you do need two coats, okay? Uh, but alleviates all those concerns. So I, I think it's a great, we've got great literature to, for upselling to the homeowners or whatever, but. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, anyhow, but pretty, good, pretty, my, pretty smart, huh? Uh, yeah, that was pretty smart. That was good. Huh? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. We don't want any moisture going through. Yep. So with LVT, P, yeah, two coats. Exactly. That, now it's a moisture blocker. Exactly. Not yeah, a correct. mitigator. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, good oh, job. Oh, man, yeah. I'm feeling good. Yes, sir. I got a big training coming up next week, too. Do you really? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be talking this up big well, time. Good. I'm glad you listened. About how smart I was yeah. on the show. All right. So I started off talking about, um, we started talking about. <laughs> no, you, that's all right. Yeah, okay. They know. I'll try to include you. They, they know. Okay. Uh, they talk, know the deal. Talking the about, it, it, uh, for guys, if you can't get a hold of the sausages or uh, if you're run out or whatever, or some guys just prefer this because they're, they're very fast at it. Do a nail glue assist using the short side of the trowel, about every six or eight inches, just one, one, you know, one, um, one swipe across the, across the uh, perpendicular to the floor, and lay your floor, stay on your nailing schedule, uh, alleviates the creaking, popping, squeaking floors by using the 540. You've also eliminated the moisture concerns up to 20%. Uh, great system. And that's the thing about our sausages is, is with the 540, it's a system. Uh, on concrete, by the way, only one coat gets you to 18 and 95. Okay, one coat, 
using our adhesive, you get to 18 to 95. So I just thought I'd bring that up because especially on, I am seeing more people using the, the nail glue assist using this method. Uh, I'm going to have on our YouTube on our YouTube uh, uh, channel uh, when you see this on our uh, when it comes back, I'll, uh, Come on. we'll have a video. <laughs> we'll have a video demonstration of that so you can see what I'm talking about. So, is it cheaper? You know, than I, sausages. It sounds like it would be cheaper in two ways. I think it sounds like it would be faster mm -hmm. and less expensive. It depends on the installer. Now let's, for, for some guys, they, if you're using the sausage gun, you don't have to bend over as far. And th okay, there's, so there there, I there's, am. There's I'm benefit. the sausage guy. Yeah, so there's benefit in that. I'm gonna, yeah. Yes, some guys feel like, you know what, I'm just faster by using this method, okay? And which is totally acceptable. The, clearly, if you look at the NWFA guidelines, they've changed. Uh, 2019, I believe it was, they said anything f over five inches, you should nail glue assist if you're doing a, a, a plank, right? Um, and some regions uh, will say anything four inches over, we're going to do it. I talk to guys in Michigan all the time, say anything four inches over, we're nail gluing assisting. So it depends on the region. But would it, What would your recommendation be? Would it be more of the weather patterns, to different me, parts of the country where, let's say where I live in New York, we yeah. have wild swings yeah we're here in denver you're not going to get the swing that we get in right. new york right so would you go nah five inches fine here yeah in new york i would recommend four inch so you know you could have the worst possible conditions let's take florida we got we they've got massive you know humidity swings in florida whatever and you could have an environment that you don't need any 540. you've got the perfect environment you've got everything you need so in that situation, to me, it's not regionally, but to me, you take my brothers in California. Every job they do now, they put the down ones the, that you work harder than. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 The, every job they do now, they put the R540 under it because it doesn't make sense for them to to to, to have that nagging concern over their head all the time. It's the same reason people use the power drive now that you're not having to worry about chatter marks or or, or those type of issues or you know some kind of uh, you know the floor's not quite flat or I got dish out. It's the same thing, you're, you're, you're minimizing your concerns and as a businessman, you are protecting your interests and, and it just makes sense for the company, so. Did I answer your question? Yes. How I many forget minutes? What the, I forget what the question was, yeah, but you covered everything. Well, there you go. <laughs> we were talking last night about reading the room. Mm. And I'm gonna bring that up. It's not part of the t topic, but you know, you're good at reading the room. Right? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know what I mean by reading the room. I, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You're really good at reading the room. I'm Thank good you at very the room. much. I, I'm really good at reading the room. Yeah. I can tell. If God doesn't like me, I know it right away. That's you know impossible. I, mean? I, I do. Who, who wouldn't like you? Maybe someone that doesn't like to get touched. No, I, but it, the, it's not that I don't like you. You it's know why the reading? Touching, the constant pawing. I started thinking after we left about why some guys are good at reading the room. You know, sometimes you meet guys who are like oblivious, right? Like, they don't know they're being a pain in the ass. They're mm -hmm. just unaware of it. Because mm -hmm. they can't read the room. And it's important when you're bidding jobs to be able to read the room. You're, that homeowner, you know what I mean? You oh, can yeah. look at their body language and you're like you're staying too long or you're talking too long or you're going down a road that they don't want to go down. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to read the room. I have a theory. I can't wait to hear this. You and I, you are Let's fan, you, you. The theory is coming, here we go. You are magnificent at reading the room. <laughs> I'm, I'm. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty good. I wish good. I had a bell. Yeah. Here's my theory. Here it is. Good-looking go. guys can't read the room. <laughs> Rich and successful people can't read the room. Because they don't need to. So right? what you're saying is... So a good-looking guy don't care what everybody else thinks. So what you're saying is, you just said you're great. You're awesome at reading a room. So you must be poor and ugly. I, I, I With what you just said, because... Pretty people don't have to read a room. Rich people don't. So, I put myself in the same cat. I said we. Poor. I said you're magnificent. I said I, I, I'm okay. Okay, I'll, I'll allow you. No, to I'm not. Touch gonna, no, me. I don't want to touch you anymore. You're gonna leave me hanging I'm here with leave this. You hanging. Okay. No, no, you got weird. Well, you said we. So that's my that's my theory about reading the room after I talked to you last Poor, night. Poor ugly people are gonna read a room better than rich pretty yes, people. Yes, because they need every every little scrap they can get, every right? Every little little little, yeah, little thing. They, every, and life is you know harder for them. They have to get any any little advantage they get. So that they're good at reading the room. Mm -hmm. But if you're a 
I'm not touching you. I know. If you're I like it was a, coming. If you're like a super good-looking guy, right? Yeah. That guy doesn't care what anybody else thinks. Why would he need to he read the room? He doesn't need to. Right. Right. If you're a rich guy, you don't care what anybody else thinks. You've got everything you need. you got it all. You don't have to read the room. But you. <laughs> us. Us. Yes. Us. We, that's how come we got good at reading the room. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know what I'm reading right now? I can't imagine. We should probably end this episode. <laughs> All right. This has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode.